Okay, so we're talking about domain and range now. And what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna just define a couple of words, and then we're gonna talk about what exactly it means in regular everyday language. So the first blank here is the domain is the set of all input values, which are also known as your independent X values of a relation or a function. So whenever we're discussing domain, we're talking about your X values. The range is the set of all output values, also known as your dependent variables or your Y variables in a relation or a function. A function or relation has continuous, Domain and range if its values are unbroken over a part of a graph. Whenever writing domain and range, we're always going to write it from least to greatest. Tanisha? Yes. Oh, yeah, good. That's exactly what it is. Yep. So I find that visualizing this topic makes a lot of sense. Uh, basically for domain and range, we're gonna be looking at a bunch of different graphs and we're gonna try to figure out what are all of the X values in the graph, also known as the domain? What are all of the Y values in the graph, also known as the range? So let's look at the graph on the left-hand side. It is a straight line. And in this graph, the arrows are very, very important because those arrows mean that graph goes on forever in either direction. If it goes on forever in either direction, does it have a start and a stop in the x-axis? How about the y-axis? No, it doesn't. So the way we're going to describe this, and we actually have a specific notation we use, which I'm going to um, talk about after we're done these examples when we when a graph goes on in either direction forever we say that it is all real values and so you use this fancy r you guys don't have to use a fancy r you can just write the letter r actually maybe now is a good time to talk about the notation we're going to use so the notation we're going to use to describe domain and range is called set notation I'm gonna show you like the official formal way to write set notation. And then maybe we can just use the short form for when we're doing these examples. Okay, so the way we write set notation is we start with a squiggly bracket. Good luck, just do it. <laughs> Some people never know how to do this and they just make like a really random bracket. If we're talking about the domain, we're going to start off by writing X and then a line. And what all of these different brackets are, what this means is this basically reads the set of all X values. And the way I think about it is mathematicians are quite lazy. They always want to come up with short forms whenever possible. So this is just taking a sentence in English and shortening it down into a bunch of different symbols. So the set of all X values such that Then over here, you're going to have some sort of condition. Now, you're not going to actually write the word condition. Here is where you're going to actually put down the specific condition of the domain and range. And we're going to use mathematical symbols, which we're going to describe as we go through the lesson. But often, the condition goes back to um, the signs we used to use when we were little. So remember when we used to have the greater than sign and the less than sign? Sometimes you can have a greater than and equal to and less than and equal to sign. We're gonna basically be using these to talk about our conditions. Okay, and then to finish it off, we're gonna write comma, X includes all real values.
And we put X includes all real values when it is a continuous line. So if it was just a bunch of different random dots in a scatter plot, then you wouldn't put X includes all real values. Um, but in case when it's a continuous line, you do include that. Jeff. It's include. So it's kind of, I'll write it here. It looks like this. So it's like X includes all real values. And actually, the R for real values is a little bit fancier. It often looks like that. Oh, you can't, you can't see that. Hold on. Let me... The way we would talk, describe the domain and range is because it goes on forever and ever and ever, it includes all real values in the domain and the range. Take a look at the second example. We have a parabola uh, and it's shaded because if you look at your domain, does this parabola go on forever in both directions in your, in your, to your right and to your left? The answer is yes, it does. Because if you were to extend this parabola, it would actually keep on going forever in the right direction and in the left direction. So in terms of your domain, in terms of your X values, it does include all real values. That's hard to wrap your head around, but when we do enough questions, it will make a little bit more sense. Now let's talk about range. Remember, range is talking about your Y values. Does this graph go forever up and down? No, it doesn't. There's actually a floor or like a limit over here. So the way you would describe this in regular language is it starts at negative three for the range. It starts at negative three, and then it goes above that. So we would say y is greater than or equal to negative three. Does that make sense? Okay. For the next one, again, we have a parabola. This time it's opening downwards. So every parabola is going to go forever to the right and to the left, which means the domain is going to be x includes all real values. However, the range, remember the range is going up and down. This parabola starts at negative one and then it goes down. So you would describe it as all the Y values that are less than negative one and including negative one because the parabola hits the line negative one. Okay, let's try a couple of examples ourselves using proper notation. So let's look at question number eight. State the domain and the range. Okay, I, we will use proper set notation for these. So we're gonna have the set of all X values such that, and as soon as I put the letter X there, that means that I'm talking about the domain. I'm talking about all of your X values side to side. How do you think you would describe the domain if it keeps on going forever and ever and ever? Does it have a condition? Does it have a start or a stop or anything like that? No, Sarah, you would say, yeah, it includes all real values. So we don't need to have a condition. We would just say X includes all real values and that's it. So there's no condition for this one because it doesn't have a start or a stop for the domain. Okay, how about the range? So for the range, you're looking up and down. We can see the graph goes forever in this direction. However, where is the starting point of the graph? What number does it start at looking from top to bottom, Sarah? Yeah, you're gonna notice that this graph starts at the number two and then it goes forever upwards. It'll never ever go below the number two. So how would we write that using set notation? We would say the set of all Y values such that, because range is always talking about your Y values. What would be the condition in this case to describe your Y values? We set it in words, it has to be above two, but how would you put it into like a symbol where you're using greater than or less than, Marzu? Yeah, all of our Y values have to be greater than and equal to two. And the reason why we put equal to is because the parabola actually touches the number two. So it's including that. And then you would also say Y includes all real values. 
because that just means that as the parabola lines go forward, it includes all the decimals, every integer above the number two. And this is the symbol that, these are the symbols and the notation I would want you to use when you're doing your, be really straightforward. Take a look at question B. Um, what do you think? If we look at the domain, how would we describe that? Is it a start or a stop or does it go on forever? So X includes all real values. How about the range? Yeah, there's no start or stop, right? It's gonna keep on going to infinity above and below. So for this one, we would just say the set of all X values such that X includes all real values. And for the next part, we would say um, the set of all Y values such that Y includes all real values. Okay, and then we have question C. For question C, uh, take a look at it. We have, again, a parabola. What do you guys notice about all parabolas for the domain? Every parabola is going to know all. Yeah, the domain for every parabola is always going to be all real values when it has arrows on both ends. So the set of all X values such that X includes all real values. Because if this problem were to extend, it would keep on going forever and ever and ever to the right and to the left. Question? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make the notation, but it is pretty specific. Yeah. And then how would you describe the range? So just in regular words, like from top to bottom, does it have a start? Does it have an end? Where does it start? Can you just say it out loud? Yeah, Sarah? Exactly. It starts at negative one and then the graph goes below it. So all the Y values for this graph begin at negative one and then they're below it. So we would describe that as the set of all Y values such that Y is less than or equal to negative one and then as long as that condition is met, Y includes all real values after that. Okay, what about a graph that doesn't have arrows on both ends? So these are graphs with one endpoint. If we were to just fill in this note, we would say graphs with one endpoint. Frequently have a domain and range in the form of this and this where all X values and Y values are larger than or smaller than their maximum or minimum value. Okay, so let's take a look at the graphs and we'll walk through them. And by the way, this is a good time for me to explain what open circles and closed circles mean. When you have an open circle, that mean like this, that means that point is not included. So we're gonna only use symbols like this. But when you have a closed circle, it means the point is included. So you're gonna to have to put a little equal to sign beneath your greater than or less than sign. Okay, open circle means like it does not include that specific point. So we're not gonna put the equal to sign. Closed circle means it does include the point. So we're gonna put a little equal to sign. Okay, now this is an activity in visualization. So don't write anything, just take a look at the graphs. Let's try to visualize what's happening in this graph. If I were to look at the domain, all the X values, I can see that the graph starts here and then it just keeps on going forever in this direction. So you would describe the domain as X is gonna be greater than all of negative two. However, did you notice that the point is actually an open circle? So in our domain, we do not put the equal to sign. We just write X is greater than negative two. And they don't use proper notation, but when we do our examples, we'll add all the extra brackets and stuff like that. How about the range? Well, again, if you take a look, the graph begins at negative five, and then it just keeps on going forever. It doesn't matter that this part of the graph doesn't go on forever. This one does. So really every single Y value is still gonna be hit by this graph by one of its little arms. So we would describe that as Y is greater than or equal to negative five. For the middle graph with um, our line, if we were to talk about the domain, which are the X values, it starts here and then it goes on forever in this direction. So you would say X is less than three. And then for the range, 
it starts up uh, over here and then it goes above forever. So you would say y is greater than negative four. And you're gonna notice none of the symbols use the little equal to sign because the, oh, the circle is open. And then for the, the last one, just take a look at yourself, see if it makes sense to you. The domain starts over here and then it goes forever here. So it's gonna be, the X values are all greater than zero. It's one, two, three, four. And for the range, it starts um, over here and then it keeps on going below. So you start at the number four and then you go below it to three, two, one, negative. So yeah. We will write that. We will be saying that. Okay, let's try our own examples. So here we have a graph with a line and a circle. Um, how would we describe the domain? So remember domain are all the X values. It seems to start at the number two and then it goes forever in this direction. So first of all, if it's domain, we're gonna say the set of all X values such that, what would be our, com our condition in this case? You can see all of your X values have to be greater than two. So what would you say? Yeah, Marzu? Sorry, negative two, yeah. Yeah, and how come you didn't put the equal sign? Exactly, because it's an open circle, that means negative two is not included in the solution set. So you would just write X is greater then negative two. And then after that condition is met, X includes all real values. Okay, what would the range be for this question? So we would write the set of all Y values such that, uh, if you're a visual person, you can see the graph starts at negative three and then it continues forever upwards. So you have to just take that language that you're explaining to yourself and then change it to math. How would we describe that? Sarah? Good. It starts at negative three and then it's greater than negative three because the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the reason why we didn't put the equal to sign is because the, the circle is closed. Yep. Yeah, so when you do a scatter plot, uh, which I don't have an example of until you get to the sheets, I think. Uh, when you do a scatter plot, you can't write X includes real values. In, in fact, for a scatter plot, all you're gonna do is you're gonna list the X's and list the Y's. Yeah, because they're not connected. But yeah. A little bit. Okay, for the second one, uh, we have a closed circle. I always get happy when we have a closed circle because it's a little less work. Does anyone wanna try and describe the domain in this question? If you're drawing it, it starts here and then it goes like this. Just give you guys a couple of seconds to think. Marzouk, what do you think? Yep. Good. And the reason why is it starts at one and then it goes on forever and it's a closed circle. Okay, how about the next one? How about range? For range, our graph actually begins at the number one, it's the highest point, and then it goes downwards. So we would say uh, the range is the set of all Y values such that, and then what would we say? Sarah? Yes. And I really like that you put the equal to sign because um, the parabola's like maximum value does touch the number. Okay, question C for domain, we were gonna write the set of all X values such that um, the graph starts at negative two and then it gets smaller. It's going in the negative direction. So we would just say, X is going to be less than negative two and X includes all real values. That's the domain. And then for the range, it's starting at three and then it gets higher and higher. And that, the bottom of that parabola is actually touching the number three. So we would say 
all y values such that y, what did I just say? Uh, three. Y is going to be greater than or equal to three, and Y includes all real values. Our graphs with two endpoints. So if we're going to put our little um, points here, it's going to say graphs with two endpoints. Now, I'm never one to memorize math. I strongly believe that you should understand math, but if you don't understand this, I'm going to say memorize this. Because whenever you have a graph between two points, you're always going to use a condition that looks exactly like this. And in this condition, this is going to be your small number, and this is going to be your large number. And if you memorize this little formula, you will never get a question wrong. But of course, we're also going to try to understand it. So hopefully, you don't have to memorize anything. Okay, so if you look at the key concepts, oh, and by the way, if it's a range, it would look like that. Same, same idea. Um, if you look at the key concepts, we have a parabola that is between many different things. So if you're talking about the range, the way I think about it is it starts here and it ends here. So the range is going to be between the numbers one and four, sorry, zero and four, and that's exactly what they wrote over here. What this is basically saying is your X values have to be greater than zero and they have to be less than four. So they're between zero and four. There's equal signs everywhere because all the dots are closed. For the range, you start at this and end here. So again, you're going from zero to two and that is what you write down here, zero to two. Everything has an equal sign because everything is a closed circle. Here we have the exact same concept. You'll just notice that this is not an equal sign because this is an open circle. Okay, let's do our own example. So uh, state the domain and range. We don't need a verbal description. We're just gonna state the domain and range. So you guys notice how none of these graphs have arrows on any of the ends. That means they have two endpoints. They have a start and a stop. Okay, so when we're talking about this one, Let's just note down the numbers. This is negative two, one, two, three, four, five. This is six. So our domain is going to be between negative two and six. Proper format would be the set of all x values such that I always begin by just writing out. I don't put equal signs yet. I just write out my little symbols that I basically memorize. I put my smaller number here and I put my larger number there. This is basically saying x is going to be your x values are going to be between negative two and six. So your x values are between the numbers negative two and six. Your x's are greater than negative two and they're less than six. And then I look at my circles. I don't need an equal sign on the left hand side, but I do need an equal sign here because this is a closed circle. This is an open circle. So the negative two is not included as part of the solution set, but six is included as part of the solution set. Comma, X includes all real values. If we were to do the range, again, if you draw little lines, you notice that all of your Y values are between two and negative two. Right? Like, the numbers in your y values are two and negative two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write the set of y values such that y is between negative, I'm squishing it in, hold on, let me get a little bit more room. So y is between, the smaller number is negative two, the larger number is two. Is negative two included in the solution set? Like this number here? It is, so we're gonna put an equal sign. And positive two is not included, so we're gonna keep that as not an equal sign. And Y includes all real values. Question. Okay, so for the next one, we have domain and range again. Um, domain is the X values. So we're gonna say that all the set of X values such that, what two numbers is it between? Yeah, one and four, um, and it doesn't include any of them. So it's just gonna be one, four, and X includes all real values.
Okay, be really careful with the range because it starts at negative two and it ends at two. So these are the numbers, but does it include negative two? Is the parabola touching negative two? The answer is yes, it is. So the bottom part of this parabola right here, it is actually touching negative two. So we're gonna include negative two, but we're not gonna include the number two because there's an open circle there. So the way we would write this is the set of all y values such that I make my symbols. My smaller number is negative two. My larger number is whole number two. And the only point that it actually includes is the negative two. So I'm gonna put a little equal sign there. And then y includes all real values. I think we'll probably do one more example and maybe we'll skip over the horizontal and vertical line stuff. Actually, maybe, maybe not. Let's see how it goes. Um, all right, for the next one, uh, we're gonna have the domain, the set of all X values such that it's gonna be between, this is four and this is one, two, three, this is negative four. It includes negative four, but it doesn't include four. So we're gonna write X. The smaller number is negative four. The larger number is four. And we just said that it includes negative four. So we're gonna put a little equal to sign there. And then X includes all real values. What do you guys think for the range? What are we gonna put for the range? So one, is the highest this line goes. And then one, two, three, four, negative five is the lowest it goes. It includes negative five because it's a closed circle, but it does not include one because it's an open circle. So we would say the set of all Y values such that Y is gonna be between negative five, which is a smaller number, one, which is the larger number. And then we're gonna put an equal to sign with the negative five because it includes the negative five. Did you have a question? Yes. Okay, let's review a little bit about horizontal and vertical lines before we start talking about domain and range. So uh, we'll begin with horizontal lines. Have a domain. So their domain is always going to be all real numbers because obviously horizontal lines go like this. They go on forever in the right and left. And then the range is gonna have whatever the number, whatever it's going through. And then for vertical lines, they always have a range of all real numbers and then a domain of whatever it is. Honestly, you don't have to memorize this. It really is very much common sense. Um, if you take a look at this example here, we have our, actually, I don't know where our line is. That's the x-axis. So it's this line right here. It goes on forever in either direction to the right or to the left. So it makes sense. The domain is x includes all real values. And then um, the range is going to be just whatever it's passing through. So it's going through the y-axis at negative two. That is the only range it's going to have. For vertical lines, the range is all real values because it goes on forever up and down. And then the domain is going to be like what X value is it going through? The only X value it's going through is X is equal to negative three. I'm just going to give you the answers for this. You guys can try it yourself because I don't want to um, take up more time. So you can just write the answers and then maybe try it on your own. And see if it makes sense to you guys. Uh, y includes all real values. And now we're done. I'm going to walk you guys through your homework and then you guys can get started.